hello guys so i am still up it's late it's like let me see what time it is it's 11 47 and i just felt the stirring on this now i told y'all i wouldn't be back on until monday right for like bible study and everything and if i did release a video like for tomorrow because i'm a cook it probably be like a little what i cooked or whatever but as i was here you know um just cleaning up my little jewelry um, box is not much in there just like my little accessories they're not even real on they have my grandma's ring in there that's real everything else is just what I like to wear just accessories and um I was just cleaning and just um, reflecting and then the Lord just started downloading this to me and I just felt a stirring to share this tonight you know instead of waiting until Monday or Tuesday you know and it's amazing how like it's just amazing like really when you tell god have your way or use me or these different things he do just that you know it's been a long day for me um with the kids and the groceries and the errands and just life and different things but it's just amazing how god is so good so um usually i'm in the bed much earlier than this i like to go to bed early uh, especially being a mom and different things i just i just like my rest i like going to sleep early when i can so tonight I just was up because, you know, it's Saturday, you know, tomorrow and the weekend and everything. And I hope everyone's doing okay. But while I'm up, you know, I just felt led to release this, you know, like tonight. Like it will bless somebody like right now, you know. So I'm going to download to you guys what God was showing me. And he said, share. You know, and this was speaking to me personally uh, with certain personal things that you guys have no idea about, you know, but I know, you know, what I've, what I've dealt with or I'm dealing with in different things and just how um, choosing God over all and over like my will and wanting his will over what I thought and different things. It, it, um, it really does prove um, what I say I am for him. It really does prove when I say he is my Lord, he is savior. God, I want your will over my will. God, I love you above everything, anything, you know, things like that and how you be tested on those things. And it's nothing new. You know, we all go through different tests and trials and different things in life. But this was really encouraging to me for me giving up um, uh, like a big, big sacrifice unto God, you know, over our, our walk, our faith walks. Uh, we give up sacrifices to God. Sometimes he take things away because he see better or sometimes it may hurt, but he see better or, you know, just different sacrifices. It could be in the area of finances. It could be relationships. It could be career business. It could be um, spiritually. It could be family. Like it could literally be anything, even if I'm not naming it. Um, it's just a sacrifice. It's something that, you know, you may not fully understand, but it's something that, you know, you choose God over that, whatever that is. That could be a billion different things, right? So here's a nugget that um, I just feel led to share with you guys. I really do. This is just stirring on me, you know? So here's what I wrote, and I pray that this encourage whoever I'm sharing it for. And what's so crazy is he gave me scripture verses to read. Um, Psalms 125, Romans 7, and I was waiting for Monday to read John 4, 1 through 26. That's what we were going to read on Monday. Um, we've read John before, and we've read that before. We we're going to read it on Monday, and the Lord actually had me reading it tonight, you know? So it's like, wow, you know? So here's here's the nugget. I'm going to try not to be before y'all long because I am going to go to sleep to get up, to get ready to cook and things for early in the morning and stuff. But let's talk about this. So here's what he just gave me at this tonight at 11 40 it's 11 51 okay so he said your spirit is not going to lead you wrong it's hard to follow sometimes and not convenient but it's a big reward in the end just follow along because i i, I type how he speaks to me right and i i know the way he was showing it to me he was showing it to me like as if it's a journey in just life and like eternally speaking okay so your flesh is easy to follow but it's a hard price to pay in the end god's spirit is committed to him and there to help god and lead us into all truth we we know this guys uh personally and corporately we've read it all throughout our bibles it's all throughout the scripture especially in john you know holy spirit is our helper to lead and guide us into all truth you know he's he does not speak on his own accord but he speaks of the father right okay so 
Your flesh is easy to follow, but it's a hard price to pay in the end. God's spirit is committed to him and there to help God and lead us into all truth. The devil is not loyal to anything or anyone, not even his own, like people that he has as like demonic, unclean spirits or people that he's using like um, physical temples, people he's using, right? He, okay, so the devil is not loyal to anything or anyone, not even his own. He has, I wrote his has his own because I was just writing about it. He actually, I remember right. He has, and guys, it just started raining again, so... Hopefully y'all can hear me. He has his he has his agenda and motives with them too. The end goal for him is hellfire and for us eternal glory with God. It's better to follow God because the reward is worth it. So here's what God was saying to me with this and for me to share with you guys. You know, as Christians, our spirit, Holy Spirit is never going to lead us down the wrong path. This we know. You know, Holy Spirit is never going to lead us down the wrong path. The life following God. You know, we have videos talking about these different things, but... The way he just put these in words to me tonight was just like, wow, you know, it's a good wow, you know, and it's like, um, you know, he's, it, it may not be always convenient to us, you know, it's not going to always be comfortable, it's not going to always be convenient, you know, but we have to choose his will, you know, we do have free will, but it's better to choose his will because it's a big reward in the end. As we always say, it's a big reward in the end eternally. See, when we look at this in this life and eternally speaking, we're not gonna, we're not gonna um, regret what we've done for the Lord or who allowing who God called us to be or standing out or being persecuted or different things like that for him or choosing him as our Lord or choosing his will over our will and way. We're not gonna regret that because we see um, the evidence and the results in our natural lives and so do others. And then we'll see it eternally speaking, right? But see, those people that's with the enemy in in um, going to be in hell, they're 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 not going to be happy about making that choice. They're going to regret that. See, you know, the enemy will try to have you thinking like, not you, just generally speaking, have you thinking like when you're dealing with certain trials and different things, like, oh, it's this or that. But just like Jesus told him. You know, he tried to tempt him after Jesus was going through the 40, uh, 40 days and 40 nights of being in the wilderness and things. And he tried to test him, but Jesus kept hitting him with the word. You know, he kept hitting him with the word because guess what? He is the word. Amen. How you going to come? How you going to come at the word with the word? Come on. You know, so almost got excited right there, but don't play with Jesus. Okay. Satan. so anyway, you know, see there, see this is why we got to stick with God because everyone that's, that's going to be there and that's their eternal salvation. That's what they chose or whatever. They are going to regret that. That's not something that they are going to be happy that they decided to do. Some people get paid in this life or they think they get in that in this life, but eternally it's not worth it. So that's why I always say it's better to be on the Lord's side. It's better to have a relationship with the Lord. It's better to go, you know, be with the Lord in this life and in the life to come. Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, almighty God. I'm talking about that Lord. Cause some people be talking about Lord, Lord and calling by God, God. And they won't put Jesus up in there. They won't put almighty God up in there. So I got to know which God and Lord you talking about. Okay. Cause I didn't see that. Oh, I didn't see that over this, this journey from like 2010 to now. I didn't seen a lot of different things as I'm sure many of you have. So you got to come correct. Tell my some God, God, Lord, Lord. We got Bible verses on that. Test the spirit by the spirit. Not everybody that said to Jesus, that says to Jesus on that day, Lord, Lord, because he going to tell them, I don't know you. Depart from me. You workers of iniquity. Jesus is late and I need to go to, to sleep. I don't want to start getting stirred up, but that's serious. But, you know, it's worth it for God. When we get, you know, um, eternally to spend with him, it's going to be worth it. And guys, again, eternity is forever. You know, the devil is not loyal to anything or anyone. Those angels that decided to become fallen angels and demons and leave with him, I believe it was one third of the angels. When he got kicked out, they, they uh, were, were uh, removed from heaven as well. You, you think they got he got rewards for them? They're going to be in the hell fire with him as well. We've read the book of Revelation and we've done so many videos talking about heaven and hell, angels and demons, the spiritual world and how things are real. You know, the spiritual world is even more realer than the natural world. 
a lot of people be looking at the natural world and the natural world is very real but i personally believe the spiritual world is more natural is more realer than the natural world because if you look at it and you really look at it a lot of things happen in the spirit first before they are birthed in the natural jesus was already released in the spirit first before he came to be in the natural father god said in the beginning let there be light he's a spirit so whatever he spoke came to be in the natural you know and there's other things that we we can do you know you got to see even before the lord um even before the lord created a formed um eve out of adam out of the i believe it was the rib this stuff that's not before me but you know that was already he, he already had that in mind spiritually before it came out naturally you see what i'm saying so the devil is not loyal to anything or even anyone, not even his own. He has his own agenda and motives with them. He won't, his, that's his agenda, John 10, 10. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We have a lot of videos talking about that. But he said, I have come to give life and life to the full or life more. Oh, this iPad just went out. Let me, okay. And life more abundantly. I'm not going over no notes. The only notes I just had was what I just read to you guys. And I put that in my little journal thing my little journal thing on here but i'm just flowing with holy spirit so i really don't have anything for this a lot of times i really don't have any notes unless he tell me to write something down but this he told me to write down for you guys but you know god is faithful to us he is committed to us he wants us to be faithful and committed to him you know he does not have no wrong motives or anything when it comes to us but the enemy don't have no right motives when it comes to us see god loves us god loves you he loves me he loves us he loves his children he loves those that's going to come to him he loves he love he love people but the devil don't have no love in him because he is a father and the father of all lives and like the words say he was a father and a thief from the beginning he don't have no love in his heart for nobody he don't have no loyalty you know, so this is why it is important to be led by the spirit and continue to be led by the spirit. And I will clarify and say this boldly, Holy Spirit, because again, people be mixed up. Some people be mixed up with the spirit, spirit and people speaking in tongues. Demons can speak in tongues. Witches can speak in tongues. Oh, the blood, the blood. Yeah, but what blood are you talking about? You talking about blood, sacrifice to demonic altar? You talking about the blood of Jesus? You need to say Jesus about your mouth to me. What God are you talking about? Because a lot of people do that. Those celebrities that's really not into Jesus Christ or Lord God Almighty, they'll say, I want to thank God for this award. But what God are you talking about? Now, that's not to all of them. But if you know, you know. So I'm going to reread this again, and then I'm going to read the scriptures in the Bible of what he gave me to read to you guys, and then I'm going to close. Your spirit, your Holy Spirit, right? God's spirit and gift to you, right? It's Your spirit is not going to lead you wrong. It's hard to follow sometimes, not convenient, because you got that battle between the flesh and the spirit, right? But it's a big reward in the end. It's a big reward like, if you don't understand what, um, hold on, y'all, let me get some water. I feel like I'm just talking to y'all on the phone. It's a big reward. So if you're in a season where you're dealing with something and you may not fully understand, as you continue to obey God and trust him and walk with him hand in hand, it may not make sense now, but the, the pieces and the puzzles will come together, you know, God is the master weaver. He know how to connect everything together. He just needs you to trust him. Okay, so it may not always be convenient to follow God or easy to follow God or surrender, but it's a big reward. It's worth it. It has its results. You know, your flesh is easy to follow. And think about that. The flesh is so easy to follow. But then when the hard prices come up, when the disobedience comes in and the consequences comes in, it's like, it was so easy to get into, but it's just like debt. It's so, and God doesn't want us in debt, but I'm just giving this example. Debt is so easy to get into, but for some people, it can be so hard to get out of. They could probably uh, build up debt within a matter of days or weeks or months or a year, and it may take them years to get out of that debt. Sure, God could supernaturally cancel that debt, 
you know, or he'll give you practical strategies like, okay, work on your credit or pay off these things or do this or do that to get these things off. You know, however he, he does it, because I believe he give us a balance with physical and spiritual, you know, um, as I've talked about in prior videos. But it's like it's so easy to follow sin. It's so easy to follow the flesh. But it's when the consequences and the results come, you know, but then when you think about it, like when you follow in um, Holy Spirit and you allow him to lead and guide you, that's the thing about a guide. You can't be telling a guide like, you know, better than a guide. How? Jesus said in the book of John. If the world hates me, it will hate you also. A student is not greater than their master. You know, so how are you going in a foreign land? Are you visiting a city that you're not used to? And there's a tour guide. That means they're they're going to give you a tour. They're guiding you. They're going to give you a tour of that land or that area. They're going to tell you, hey, when you're here, you should stay in this area. No, you shouldn't go in that area. They're going to tell you different things that you don't know. They are familiar with that land. So how are you going to go to that place or that land that you've never been before. That's the purpose of you having the whole tour guide and getting that full experience, you know, and you telling the tour guide like you know better than a tour guide. No. So we cannot have that mindset with the Holy Spirit that comes from Almighty God. The Trinity is Father God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit. You know? So it's like when you're following the Holy Spirit, you're following the Lord. You're following his Holy Spirit. Look at, I want you to look at Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13, right? Because God has good plans concerning you. But our flesh, our own will, our own emotions, this, our flesh, our sinful things, it's, you know what I mean? So God's spirit is loyal to us. God's spirit is committed to us. He sent his son Jesus to die for us, you know, to guide us, to lead us into all truth. He's daily there to help us every day, you know. And the devil, I'm repeating this again for somebody so you can really get it. The devil is not loyal to anything or anyone. He has no loyalty in him. Yes, he can bless his, his children. And I say bless, quote unquote, and I don't mean really bless. I mean like a pretense of a blessing, but it's really not a blessing because they're tied to him. So that is a curse. He, he can give them things and different things and riches and wealth and honor and different things. But it's going to come with a cost. It does not worth their eternal salvation. As the word says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? He has his agenda and motives with, with, with them too. You know, he wants to kill still in this world. He wants to take as many people to hell with him. Whoever coming along for the ride. And he going to dress it up for different people in different ways. That's why it's good to be on the Lord's side. And I thank God for saving me when he did and us and even people that's going to come into the kingdom. Amen. You guys keep praying and interceding because God is at work in this world. And um, it's just better to follow God because the reward is worth it. So let's get into the reading. I hope that made sense for somebody. First, we're going to read Romans 7. That's the first thing he gave me. And guys, I'm praying every day for you, for me. Everything and everyone that God lays on my heart on daily um, interceding, you know. So I'm not going to read the part about the marriage. We have a Roman series. We also have a song series and a John series. So we've read all of this in full context. You can do that if you want to or check out the videos. But we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about struggling with sin, which is verses seven, Romans seven, seven through 24 and guys please excuse the background noise i was just flowing again in this word but you know it's kind of busy so an illustration from marriage is verses one through six you can read that in your private time but this is um seven who's showing me okay what shall we say then what should we say then is the law sin certainly not indeed i would not have known what this is apostle paul speaking to the church at rome okay certainly not indeed i would not have known what sin was except through the law for I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said do not covet, which is um, Exodus 20, 17 and Deuteronomy 5, 21. But sin seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment produced in me every kind of covetous desire. For apart from law, sin is dead. Once I was alive apart from law, but when the commandment came, sin sprang to life and I died. I found that the very commandment that was intended to bring life actually brought death. 
for sin seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment deceived me and through the commandment put me to death so then the law is holy and the commandment is holy righteous and good did that which is good then become death to me by no means but in order that sin might be recognized as sin it produced death in me through what was good so that through the commandment sin might become utterly sinful just a quick sidebar ain't y'all so grateful for god's love and mercy and his grace okay 14 um we know that the law is spiritual but i am unspiritual sold as a slave to sin i do not understand what i do for what i want to do i do not do but what i hate to do and if i do what i do not want to do i agree that the law is good as it is it is no longer i myself who do it but it is sin living in me i know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature or in the flesh for I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against, against the, hold on. But I, 23, okay, but I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. And also there's a scripture talking about where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. I don't know where that is at exactly right before me, but that just came to me too. Okay, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Here's what I love, 25. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. And that's what we need continuously as our foundation every day. Because we can't make it without him. We can't make it, guys, throughout our daily walk or spiritually spiritually or whatever without Jesus. So that's why it's important for us to cling on to him every day. Because every day not going to look the same. Every season not going to feel the same. You know, and then Romans 8 talks about life through the spirit future glory more than conquerors and we've read that multiple times as well um i encourage you to you know read it or check it out i tell you guys about what we've already read because we have a lot of videos on here and a lot of them we've done in-depth um studies on it read them you know so i, I give them to you all as a reference because i always tell you guys you know you should read things in full context so you know the bible for yourself can't nobody just come and give you a bunch of bull you know what the word says for yourself you know, you are a workman that study to show yourself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed, you know. So Psalms 125, it's the song of essence. It says, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forever more, forevermore. The scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous, for then the righteous might use their hands to do evil. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, to those who are upright in heart. But to those who turn to crooked ways, the Lord will banish with the evil doors. Peace be upon Israel. And I have, before we read John, I hope we have time to read John, because I don't want to do two videos. I'm going to read Psalms 90, 14 through 17, and then a little bit of Galatians 5. Psalms 90, 14 through 17. Okay. It says, uh, satisfy us in the morning. And y'all keep my my um my sis in prayer. She just had her baby, just had a baby a couple days ago. Everything is well with her. I also went to go visit her tonight um, after grocery shop. Today was so long, guys. I'm really shocked that I'm not asleep. But it's like God had me up reflecting and doing what I was doing and cleaning my jury box and just watching TV and relaxing for a reason. He really did. So y'all keep pouring prayers to her. Her family are doing great. Um, but she just had her baby. Her and her husband are um, excited. Blesses her for a child. So y'all keep her in prayer. She's doing good, but just keep praying over her. Blessings over her and her family and things. I had went and checked up on her. Took her a few things. And I'll be back by tomorrow to check up on her and on the baby too. Okay, so Psalms 90, 14 through 17. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. And I said, I hope this thing does not cut off. 
Galatians. Let me see if I can find it. I think I just passed it, y'all. Hold on, please. Galatians 5, I just want to read. So, it's we did a Galatians series also, but it's talking about freedom in Christ, life by the Spirit. And I want to read verses 22 through 26. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Now, we'll close with John 4, 1 through 26. And guys, I just really thank God. He is an awesome God. I like being able to share things with you guys. A lot of things that he gives me is like for me, you know, personally, and I'm just writing that's between me and him. But when I can share and I'm getting people saying they were blessed and to God be the glory and these different things. Thank you, God. You know, it's like, God, I thank you. So let's read John 4, 1 through 26. Jesus talks with a Samaritan woman. And I want to encourage someone with that, too. You, you keep living out your purpose. You know, you keep living out and being who God needs you to be. Okay? You keep doing that. Don't stop that for nobody or nothing. Read Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. So Jesus talks with a Samaritan woman. The Pharisees, and keep in mind verses 24, 23 through 24. Okay? Which I'm going to read real quick. It says, Yet a time is coming and has now come when the truth worshipers will follow will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. But we're going to read it in fuller context. So the Pharisees heard, fair, okay, Jesus talked to the Samaritan woman. The Pharisees heard that Jesus was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. You can go back in three. It's talking about John the Baptist's testimony about Jesus. Jesus teaches Nicodemus and things. But the Pharisees heard and for that. Jesus was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. When the Lord learned of this, he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. I'm just going to read tonight, guys. We've broken down John 4, the importance of this, the culture, the background, all of this. I'm just going to read it, okay? So now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar. Somebody say Sychar. Near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. And Jesus is really our real example. That's why, like, he has to be our center and foundation and real example. He has to be our standard. You know, you heard he said, J Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. When the Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food, you know. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink for Jews who not associate with Samaritans? They don't use additions that Samaritans have used, you know. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water, Jesus. Living water. Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as did also his sons and his flocks and herds? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. That is so encouraging. We don't got to be thirsty because we got Jesus. Amen. We don't got to be naturally thirsty or spiritually thirsty or physically thirsty or relationally thirsty or financial thirsty or business thirsty or ministry thirsty because we got Jesus. I don't know who that's for, but you don't got to be thirsty because Jesus quenches your thirst. Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go call your husband and come back. You see how cool Jesus is? Like, you can talk to him. He know everything already. He, is, he know when to be firm. He know when to be gentle. 
He is just everything. I am here for this. Go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. And I love John 4 because this ministered to me a lot when I first got saved and just broke open so much intimacy. You know, in... Oh, that's the whole story time. Let's just keep reading, guys. So the fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet or I can perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus declared, believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming. Here's where we get it. It has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. See, the Father is seeking you. You listening to this video. He wants you to worship him in spirit and truth. Come on, talk about it. God is spirit. And his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. And it continues on. The disciples rejoined Jesus. Many Samaritans believe that woman was like an evangelist. You know, her life changed from being in that presence with, with the Lord. And just that divine um, appointment. And they talk about Jesus heals the official son and some other things. But I'm going to end this, guys, now. Now I'm feeling the, the sleepiness come on. So thank you, God. Because I wasn't even tired, but it's like he gave me the energy to get that word out. So now I'm about to get some sleep. I love you guys. Y'all be blessed. Stay safe. I pray you guys was blessed by this video. I give God all the glory. And amen. Y'all be blessed.